Hello all, welcome to Simplified Triple Studies. In this video, I will be discussing how do you measure acceleration? What are the different methods to measure acceleration? Before moving on to the discussion, I request everyone to subscribe my channel. If this is useful, kindly share with your friends also. Actually, what is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but the rate of change of velocity. The unit is meter per second square. That point you know, right? So there are different applications for measurement of acceleration, especially for automotive engineering field and different kinds of uh, the plastic or manufacturing industries or various type of uh, units we need to measure the acceleration of any particular object. So we need uh, certain transducers for measuring the acceleration. What are the different types of transducers which are applicable for measuring the transducers? Actually. The acceleration of a moving body is generally measured by using accelerometers. So, the general type of method of measurement of acceleration is known as accelerometers. Basically, accelerometers can be divided into two. First one is piezoelectric type, another one is seismic type. For sensitive measurement, you can go ahead with the seismic type for accelerometer. First of all, I will be letting you know what do you mean by piezoelectric type accelerometer. First of all, I will introduce the diagram of piezoelectric type accelerometer. So, we have a piezoelectric crystal. You can able to see the piezoelectric crystal. And uh, over piezoelectric crystal, there is a mass with a certain kilogram. Based on the design, you can able to put the mass. And uh, there is a base region. Okay. And uh, we have electrodes. These are the electrodes. Electrodes are placed over the. This is your electrodes. And... Uh, uh, the external object will be interacting with the base region. Okay. And uh, what do we know about uh, piezoelectric crystal? So, in, if we provide any mechanical input, definitely piezoelectric produce electrical voltage. That we already discussed. If you want to know much more about piezoelectric crystal, I have already made a longer video, longer duration video on piezoelectric crystals. It's available in the i button and uh, description box. Kindly go through that. Let us uh, go ahead with the measurement. So, we know that piezoelectric crystal, this is your crystal. Can you see the crystal? Yeah, this is very clear. The crystal has been arranged between two electrodes. This is your electrode number 1 and this will be the electrode number 2. It is just like a sandwich arrangement. So, crystal, this is your crystal which I marked like uh, C. Can you see this? So, crystal has been made a sandwich arrangement between uh, two electrodes. And uh, over the particular electrode, you are applying the mass with a certain kilogram. Now, the external body is connected to the base region with respect to the movement of external body. So, with respect to the movement of external body, what is going to happen? There are changes which is happening in the crystal. Vibration or changes will be happening. With respect to changes in the crystal, definitely what is going to happen? The output voltage will be getting varied. So, the acceleration, you know an equation, right? Uh, for F is equal to M into K. Correct? Correct. From this expression, anyway, mass is kept constant, maybe 15 kilogram or 20 kilogram. It will not change. Stationary. Uh, from this relation, I will be writing like uh, F is proportional to acceleration. Pretty clear. So, as the force increases, definitely the acceleration also will be increased. If the acceleration is very much high, obviously the output voltage output to voltage also will be very much high. Both are directly proportional. Force is proportional to acceleration. Uh, then acceleration is directly proportional to voltage. That is what exactly happening here. So, increasing acceleration will definitely increase the force and the change in force will lead to the increase in voltage. This is a simple method of measurement of acceleration. But uh, sometimes the accuracy, we can say that sensitivity to temperature is a main issue. And uh, there are uh, sub it, it may subject to hysteresis error also. The accuracy matters a lot sometimes. But uh, there are a lot of advantages. Compact size, uh, weight is very less, the out, uh, high output impedance, then sensitivity is more, high frequency response. These are the advantages. But there are few setbacks. We have to overcome the setbacks. For that purpose, we need to use seismic type accelerometer. So, uh, it uh, provide more frequency response and uh, the error will be very much less in case of seismic type accelerometer. I will be familiar in the seismic type accelerometer. The workspace or base we can able to see. This is your base area. 
uh, beyond the base just above the base you are actually uh, making a frame this is a housing frame okay just like a housing frame is kept over the you can very clearly observe and uh, in between what you are going to do is you need to arrange a seismic mass material seismic mass material is arranged over the here you can see the damper damper system okay dashboard there is a dashboard dashboard is available there okay uh, next you can see the spring spring is available there okay spring the, it basically it's called a spring mass damper system spring this is your spring then mass the damper system clear basically a control system it's element of a control system you might have already uh, discussed the basics of uh, spring mass damper system everything you already learned even i have prepared a video on this particular topic mass spring dashboard all those things you can able to check the playlist of control system i have explained in detail video almost 30 minutes i have spoken based on this topic here you are going to keep the displacement transducer so with respect to the movement the seismic mass is going to activate so definitely we can able to sense a minute vibration okay that is possible but in case of previous method uh, the vibration cannot be sensed but here we can able to sense the vibration with respect to the movement the seismic mass is getting activated there is a displacement transducer then you are can able to get the output based on a very minute vibration so displacement of mass resulting from applied voltage is measured and correlated to the acceleration mass is connected to the parallel spring damper system and it is used to sense the vibration so these are the basic info information about seismic type accelerometer next is another method strain gauge acceleration it is also known as vibration sensor what is strain gauge i already explained the strain gauge please refer the previous video so strain gauges are kept like this two arms of the wheatstone bridge and uh, wheatstone bridge is powered by a regulated dc power supply which is shown over here he represent regulated dc output so uh, with respect to the change in vibration or acceleration the resistance of r1 and r2 are getting varied that is very clear so once the resistance are getting varied we will come to know that uh, the acceleration acceleration has been happened that means there are, there are certain force force happened on that particular force took place over the particular material so this this may be reason for the acceleration okay so the change in resistance r1 and r2 is proportional to force due to acceleration so you know that force is directly proportional to acceleration then that is proportional to the change in uh, r1 and r2 that is the concept here that r1 and r2 you can measure with the help of wheatstone's bridge so acceleration is related to vibration yes of course the meter is calibrated to read the voltage proportional to acceleration okay so acceleration is directly proportional to vibration and the vibration frequency in the range of 0 to 1 kilohertz so these are the basic information regarding the strain gauge acceleration acceleration meter or acceleration sensor it is also known as vibration sensor it is pretty clear another method is called lbdt acceleration sensor so we already discussed about the linear variable differential transducer so this is basically operates based on the movement of the core can you see the core yeah so uh, the core will be directly connected to the mechanical object where vibration is produced and we have primary winding and the two secondary winding you can able to see these are series and opposite secondary windings are series and opposite so with respect to changes in the core position changes in the core definitely uh, the output voltage is getting uh, deferred so that's a concept with respect to the vibration uh, what i can say the posi the position of the core is getting varied by changing the position of the core definitely you will be getting the output so position matters a lot okay so that is what exactly lbdt acceleration or vibration sensor operates if it is at the middle means output may not be uh, a certain value you will be getting zero so if it is upper position you will be getting uh, es1 greater than es2 output will be es1 minus es2 if it is lower side then es2 minus es1 so we already discussed about lbdt sensor that uh, you can able to recall it's available in the description box so so these are the speciality of uh, the vibration by using uh, lbdt acceleration similarly vibration can be measured by using permanent magnet and coil so the same method which you discussed for measurement of velocity that you can able to uh, check it up see with respect to the movement definitely uh, you can able to check the acceleration that we already discussed in the previous session okay 
So in this session, we discussed about what are the different methods to measure acceleration. Finally, thank you for.